Hey guys, welcome to the first episode in a new series that I'm going to be doing. Uh, this series will be covering the journey that I will be going on to get my online master's in computer science. Or I should say my master's in computer science online. Same deal, I guess. Um, but let's go ahead and get started. So my background is in computer science. I just finished my undergraduate degree in computer science from University of North Carolina this past May. So um, I'm not taking any breaks. I'm just going straight into the master's while working full time. So I basically was deciding between um, Georgia Tech's online master's and UT Austin's online master's. I also considered University of Illinois since I know that one is relatively popular, but that one is quite significantly more expensive than Georgia Tech's in UT Austin, so I only applied to Texas and Georgia Tech. Got into both. Um, there is some slight differences. Georgia Tech's does not require GRE and UT Austin does. Um, I didn't score particularly well on the GRE, so um, that may be a deciding factor for you. I didn't do very well on the GRE, I don't remember my scores, but I'll put them in text or something. Um, and uh, I, whatever it was, it was good enough though. Um, so I got into both. Um, the biggest reason why I chose Georgia Tech is just because uh, it has specializations, which I think um, were attractive to me because the whole point of me getting a master's is to specialize in a specific area of computer science. And also that has just been around for longer, but there are also some downsides that I did not expect with that. Um, UT Austin is a very new program. I think it's only the second or third cohort. Um, I think I applied like fall 2020 as the second cohort. So it's a much smaller program and I think it's much more personalized. Um, whereas Georgia Tech, I had no idea how big it was. There are thousands of students um, doing this online masters. And at times I feel like it is definitely gonna be easy to fall through the cracks. So that's, that's my initial thoughts on the application process. Uh, I can show you what um, I applied with for Georgia Tech's. Uh, they have a statement of purpose, which I basically just wrote an essay about why I wanted to um, do, do this master's, which is basically just to um, get deeper knowledge as opposed to broader knowledge and uh, an, a short background statement. So those are pretty standard. The application process for Georgia Tech is very easy. So that's definitely something that they have in their favor. Um, I'm gonna go ahead and talk about the orientation registration process next. I have to say that the application process for um, Texas was way better than Georgia Tech's. Of course, this is like a coronavirus pandemic during this um, application decision process, so I can see why it was delayed. But UT Austin was not nearly as delayed, um, much more responsive to questions about the application process. And uh, overall, Georgia Tech was kind of a disaster. In short, um, they have a two-step process for application decisions. Um, you get accepted into the actual program, and then you get accepted into graduate studies by um, a, the Office of Graduate Studies, which is not affiliated with um, the institution decision. So it's pretty annoying. So you get accepted by the online master's people, and then you have to wait even longer to get accepted by the Office of Graduate Studies. Um, on top of that, there was issues with um, citizenship status. So like initially they were saying that like, some people weren't going to be able to register on time and it was kind of a fiasco, but they did resolve it just by removing those holds and letting people register and then dealing with those issues after. So in terms of orientation for Georgia Tech, you basically just get a really long PDF. Kind of kind of boring, like I obviously don't like reading that much, um, but it serves its purpose and you also get a uh, YouTube playlist from Dr. Joyner, who is apparently going to be um, an important person since he is a professor and he does um, help run the program. And that YouTube playlist is actually very helpful. They walk through registration, 
um, how to get your bus card, which is basically like your campus ID. Um, and they also walk through the various platforms like Canvas, which is basically like Blackboard, EDU, if you use that in undergrad, um, and Piazza and other technologies. So in terms of orient or orientation, it's just like that PDF and the YouTube playlist. And it really is good enough that like you, don't, you don't really need anything else, so that's all you need. For registration, it's a really strange process, in my opinion. Um, and this is where I really first found out how big the class is for um, each matriculation group or cohort. So uh, basically how it works is you register online through a dilapidated um, system, which is no surprise. I mean, that's how it is, at, I feel like, at every school. Um, but essentially when you register for phase two, um, you're not going to get into any classes. Uh, so it seems like how it works is you just want to get onto the wait list and then they hire more TAs based on the number of people on the wait list and they just uh, will gradually open it up after registration just to match the demand for each particular class. So it's a little weird in the sense that when you register you don't get any classes, you just get on the wait list. Um, and they also have a free for all day, which is on the last day of the last day of registration. Um, basically, the wait list clear out, and then from there, it's a free for all for that one day. Basically, uh, you just have to try and add a class right when someone drops the class. Basically, and I did get into a class that way. Um, I'm taking two classes this semester, which is strongly advised against, but since it's work from home, I figured now is a good time to. And uh, I got into ethics and um, artificial intelligence for robotics. Okay, so takeaways for this initial thoughts. Um, one, UT Austin's program is newer which kind of has some more unknowns, but it probably has smaller cohort sizes and you might be able to have more personalized interactions. Two, registration for Georgia Tech is crazy, but it all kind of works out. I got into two classes, the two that I wanted. Um, they are artificial intelligence ethics and artificial intelligence for robotics. Um, and that will actually be the subject matter of my next video and I'll just cover my initial thoughts on those two classes as I go along. Um, but yeah, so far everything's been good. Um, the registration and admissions process was a little stressful. I think they could have, they can do things to improve that, but overall, so far, so good. <laughs>